at this favorite gas station diner outside Meadville, Mississippi. African Americans and their white neighbors enjoy southern home-cooked meals. Sitting together in a restaurant is something ordinary now, but just over 40 years ago, it was illegal. Civil rights activism by both blacks and whites in the 1960s brought sweeping changes to the laws that kept the races apart, literally. And while they now live side by side, that little one factor, local Reverend Ricky O'Quinn says attitudes are changing slowly. There's little violence today, but racism exists by um, job discrimination, uh, housing, um, elected officials, um, education. Violence was the tactic used by some whites as they resisted the end of segregation, and it came to a head in the summer of 1964. White supremacist groups like the Ku Klux Klan burned black homes and churches, kidnapped and killed. Charles Moore and his friend Henry D. were victims, allegedly beaten to near death by James Ford Seal and another man. Barely alive, they were dumped in the Mississippi River. We learned that this boy whose body we found yesterday and which has tentatively been identified as Charles Edward Moore. Prosecutors and the police let the case go cold and for many years prime suspect Seal was thought to be dead until 2005 when the brother of Charles Moore and a Canadian filmmaker discovered Seal was very much alive. He was arrested and charged earlier this year. The trial is being watched closely throughout the South. But here in Meadville, the town where Henry D. and Charles Moore were kidnapped, both blacks and whites are reluctant to speak about the past and the trial that's happening now. You, you live in the present and then you move on. That present, says Juanita Brown, is much better than the days when blacks were subjected to institutional racism, though things are still not perfect. In most cases, I think they have a, a fairly good opportunity. Let's say it that way. Everything is not 100% like we'd all like for it to be, but things are good. They are, they are pretty good. One nation, under God, indivisible. But some old ideas die hard. Ernie Hopkins belongs to the Council of Conservative Citizens, a group with ties to the white separatist movement. He says, while he doesn't condone Mississippi's violent racial history, he believes integration only benefited blacks, causing more misunderstanding and mistrust between the races. Where what probably started with some concepts is a very noble idea has just been taken to, should we say, serve a lot of other interests other than the noble idea at this point in time. The James Ford Seal trial won't itself heal the deep wounds between blacks and whites in Mississippi. But at the very least, one crime of the past may not go unpunished. Viviana Hurtado, Al Jazeera, Meadville, Mississippi.